Welcome to day 524 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein, here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DeSoFi, a Web3 mobile app on the DeSo blockchain. So, Brian, Michael Saylor is in the news today. What's the latest with him? Yeah, so if you follow stocks at all, especially Bitcoin-related stocks, uh, you've likely heard of MicroStrategy and Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy is a software company that decided to pretty much buy Bitcoin with all of its cash and continue to acquire Bitcoin by taking out loans and issuing bonds. And Michael Saylor is the founder and the co-founder and the chairman right now. He was C CEO until he stepped down recently. But the the um, DC, a DC attorney general. Uh, has said that he evaded $25 million in local taxes. So Carl Racine, who is the attorney general in Washington, D.C., said that Saylor had not been paying the local taxes, even though he actually lived in D.C. Saylor, on the other hand, alleged that he resided in Florida, which obviously if you're familiar with Florida tax law, it doesn't have a state income tax, but he actually had a home in DC. He lived in DC and they're going to try and prove that to try and get this money from Michael Saylor. Uh, I don't know what to think about it. They're seeking a hundred million dollars in penalties as well as unpaid taxes. Uh, I think the best thing I can say is pay your taxes. You don't want to mess with, with the tax people. Uh, the, whether it's the IRS or the state authorities, because there are big penalties. And Saylor allegedly didn't pay $25 million in taxes, but he could be on the hook for $100 million after penalties. So just pay attention to state laws, to federal laws, and you don't want to get in hot water. And I, I don't think it's going to have a major material impact on micro strategy, uh, but they are saying that that MicroStrategy uh, has conspired to help Sailor evade these taxes. So there could be some blowback, but I, I don't think it'll be too too much. Yeah, and of course, these are just allegations. Uh, nothing's been proven in a court yet, so right. keep that in mind as well. Uh, so moving on, the Nifty Investor, uh, he has a YouTube channel, and it's also huge on TikTok, covering various cryptocurrencies and blockchains within the space. Uh, put out a new video, and this video features Deso. Uh, the video is actually focused on focused on highlighting ten different coins with the perfect risk to reward ratio. And Deso came in. Uh, they talk about it toward the end of the video. If you want to watch it, you can see it in the link above. Um, they, they mentioned Diamond and Pearl in the video as well. Uh, and to basically sum up what they said, they said Deso is trying to build web three versions of the web two social media giants and they mentioned pearl as being the instagram killer and diamond being the twitter killer so definitely watch it if you haven't already i love that nifty the nifty investor is so engaged with keeping up with DSO. you know it's like they they highlight they highlighted DSO. i think it's probably a paid ad back in the day but they keep up with it and they keep talking about DSO and some of these other more uh comprehensive crypto videos they create yeah, it's, it's great publicity, great publicity for the blockchain, for Web3 in general. Uh, keep it up, Nifty Investor. So, Vaibhav Obara, and I know I'm saying that name wrong. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm terrible with names. Has previewed the Claver Hens NFT series. Uh, it's a new NFT series that's coming to DSO. It's going to feature a thousand unique hens on the DSO blockchain. Uh, their goal is to inspire people to make a difference in the NFT world. Uh, they also just released their official trailer for the Claver Heads. And you can view that via the link above on DSO or below on YouTube. It's a really cool video. Um, yeah, it's playing so, right now. Yeah, so, I mean, check it out. Uh, you can also check them out on claverhens.nftz.me if you want to check out some of their NFTs that are coming uh, when they are minted and released. Uh, I'd love that NFTs keep popping up on DSO. Yeah, I, I mean, 
obviously the NFT space in general is slow right now in this crypto winter, but I, I, I'm happy to say that the DSO NFT space, I think is above the curve a little bit. Like I, I don't think DSO NFTs dried up quite as much as some other chains have. And there's still a robust community around NFTs uh, on DSO. And there's lots of bid actions, action going on. At the same time, there was less to dry up as well. You know, exactly. The action on DSO wasn't up to par as Solana and Ethereum. Uh, so moving on, NFTZ is now currently resyncing uh, NFTZ.me. It appears that there are multiple nodes that were brought down last night or early this morning without anyone getting any kind of notice, which has some developers a little upset. Uh, it seems there were some core updates and changes which caused this. We don't know exactly what. Uh, transactions and Postgres nodes are the ones that seem to be affected. Um, like I said, NFTZ is re resyncing right now. Uh, and it seems like there were many nodes that were affected. Not all of them. Maybe some of the nodes that weren't as up to date weren't as affected. I don't know. Uh, Time made a suggestion to Natter. Uh, that Natter should get a monitoring service and pr provide public alerts when issues like this arise. Like maybe have status.deso.org and on that website show the current status uh, and make so that people know what's going on. If there's an if there's an a hiccup or if there's an issue or if something goes down for some reason, update that status so that all the developers and all the users on the Deso blockchain can know what's going on. Tyne also said that it appears that Musai and Deso no code are still stuck. And that's according to his research on Deso Ninja. Um, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of frustration this morning by the developers. Hopefully, this gets gets fixed, and hopefully, you know, there's answers to what's going on. Yeah, and, and I I love Tyne's suggestion. I think if you had some status page, it, it not only alleviates users' concern when they're when they go to a node and it's not working, but it's a lot of stress for developers to be working on something. And then they find out that everything's screwed up and then they feel bad because they know users are at their website trying to access it and there's not really anything they can do and they can't really say anything because they don't know what's going on. So I think having a status would definitely put some minds at ease and also help with the communication effort between the core and the various developer communities as well as users. So definitely something that I think Natter should take a look at ASAP. Yeah, so today's September 1st. September 1st. September 1st. So NFT bids over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ, these people bid on the most NFTs in the last day. Uh, ZN Mead was number one, followed by Chermislav Digdong, Dragonstone, Veshna Sularin, Ides of March, Garbo, Vishal Golia, Ben Ersing, Sarah NFTs and what would Bird D? Uh, thanks for bidding. Uh, thanks for keeping the DSO NFT community vibrant. And moving on to the top diamond creators over the last 24 hours, according to our friends at Altum Dates, these people received the most diamond tips on their posts and their replies over the last day. Uh, Polly Hart was number one. We were number two, followed by Miami Japan, Food Curator, McMarsh, Rihan Ri, Now and Then, Tobias Schmid, JD Armstrong, and Little Lover. Congrats to all those people. Keep engaging. Yeah, congratulations. And today's events, thanks once again to Miss Katie Ann for providing us with the list. Today at 11 a.m. Eastern Time is the Crypto Roundtable on Twitter Spaces. Uh, of course, that's Mario Mario Nolfall. Uh, he It's going to be Focus on the crypto bottom. Uh, they're going to have a $10,000 giveaway, and Michael Bay joins the show. So definitely check that out. Mario does an awesome job with these Twitter spaces. They get thousands and thousands of people attending them. 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitter spaces. Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Time also on Vibe Hut is prospecting morning hours. So definitely check one of those out, maybe in bounce between both rooms or have one in one earbud and one in another earbud. I don't even know if that's possible. But, um, one on your phone, one on your desktop. Yeah, How about that? So, I mean, there's two events going on at 11 a.m. Uh, 1 p.m. is Entre, on Entre's community hangout with Sean Tron and Michael Mara. At 4 p.m. Eastern Time is Space Dows featuring Pablo Moncada Larotids from Moondale. Uh, this is a Dow Dow 
Twitter Spaces room. Uh, Mossify and Erica Ishanis will be there. Definitely check that out at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I love these Dow Dow Twitter Spaces. And at 9 p.m. Eastern Time is DCO, ah, DSO Twitter, DSO Trivia Night, hosted by Beer Buds, Brian Drever, Blockchain Padawan, NF3, Jody Vosser, Just Nick, NFTs Live, uh, that's Brecky on Clubhouse. So check that out at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Clubhouse. I love that these Clubhouse rooms are still going, especially these nightly rooms. And if you want to get links directly to any of these rooms, you can just go to Miss Katie Ann's profile on Diamond App, and you'll be able to just click directly to the event. And that's all the news that we have for today. Everybody have a great rest of your Thursday. And pay your taxes. And pay your taxes. And talk to you tomorrow.